to England by 10. I think there's a, a, a new enthusiasm to want to play the game, to really attack. They've been working on it all week. If they're accurate and they execute, it will come into plan and it will actually take place. I actually think the English are fitter than the French. So if they speed the game up, I think they'll take them completely in the last 15 minutes. Real tension and the eyes have it there from Owen Farrell in the dressing in the, in the tunnel, as you can see. It's the two sides coming out together here at Stade de France for the second match in this year's RBS Six Nations. Huge cacophony of noise here in the stand. And Jerry, just tell us, all these young players in the England back division, what is this like, this moment for them and for a couple of them, their very first ever international They years. will absolutely be loving this. It, you can't help but love it. It's just, it rings in your ears and sends shivers down your spine. You love it. It's what you, it's what you play for. It's certainly not uh, Exeter or Gloucester in here this evening, so uh, good luck to the two legendary you know, caps on the backs of Burrell. They front up, great night, but what an atmosphere to play in, just brilliant. Well, you can tell from the diverse opinions here that this is the kind of match where almost no result would surprise you. It could be a substantial margin victory for either side, or it could be the closest of confrontations won by the tiniest of margins after a thrilling match in Cardiff earlier on this afternoon. Stand by for what promises to be an enthralling second chapter in this year's Six Nations, and it will be described for you by Brian Moore, Andy Nicholl and Eddie Butler after the anthems. <laughs> It's a deep blue clear sky over the Stade de France and France have picked an experienced pack to throw themselves at England. Pascal Papé wins his 50th cap tonight and is the captain in the absence of Thierry Dussetoir. Alexandre Flancard, a giant alongside him at six foot eight. Behind the scrum, Jules Plisson. A first cap for the outside half, what a passer he is. Can he do it at this level? Can we ever get a pass out of the centre combination of Wesley Fofana and Mathieu Bastaro? Experience in the England pack, 51st cap for Dylan Hartley, Dan Cole, 44th cap, Courtney Laws in the second row, Chris Robshaw the captain, but behind the scrum, such little experience. First cups for Luther Burrell and for Jack Knoll, a 20-year-old from Exeter. France, six forwards on the bench. England, five. Nigel Owens of Wales is the referee of Le Crunch. It could be a busy evening.
We're off and running, and Jack Knoll knocks on with his first touch of international rugby. Pascal Papi for France drives it up. Right away. Jean-Marc Doucin. This is wing forward. Yannick Nyonga. Plisson. His first touch for Uge. Johan Uge for France. What a start to the Six Nations. For France. Well, the worst possible start for England. And conversely, France will take anything that's given. And that fairly and squarely came from the failure to take the initial kickoff. Restarts are such an important part of the game. England didn't perform there properly. That's a very good kick. Bounce favours him and the rest, well, a simple running. But that came from the forwards not gathering the ball. And England, well, if they didn't think they had a job to do, they certainly must know that now. Johan Uge of Toulouse opens the scores, 32 seconds on the clock. The conversion from wide out doesn't compound the terrible start for England, but France still lead five points to nil. Well, you've got to also give a lot of credit to Plisson because he recognised the first ball that came out. The English rush defence came in, forced the French back inside. Second time, put the ball behind. Lots of space. The try scorer calls for the restart and takes it. Jean-Marc Doucin, the scrum half, looks at Plisson, opts to kick himself, and France do manage the restart. Of course, the set phases are going to be important. If you can't get the line out right, you're going to struggle. Dylan Hartley, his first throw. Safely down. Billy Vunipola. Danny Kerr to Farrell. Chance here for England. Johnny May coming off his left wing. Kerr, Captain Robshaw. Dan Cole, the prop, takes the inside flick from Farrell. Driven back, Hartley loose but well picked up. Vunipola again. That's what they want. The powerful number eight to do. Take out two defenders. Farrell, good pass away. Ball hasn't gone forward. Play on. Chance for Luther Burrell in his first. Cap game. Nyonga tries to make life difficult for Kerr at the rep. Farrell goes to scrum half. 12 trees. Farrell. No, looking for work. The wingers very much involved off their wings. Not held, Courtney Laws can pick up and go a second time. Farrell, May, the left wing on the right wing. Penalty advantage to England. Okay. Nigel Owens deciding that uh, the French tackler didn't release before getting to his feet and that's a reasonably confident reply from England, not panicking, keeping the ball in hand, recycling, knee on the floor, 
Johnny May though turned the wrong way and he's got his body round earlier and whilst Noel got ramped back in that tackle he had the presence of mind to at least keep the ball alive now, Oyen Farrell uh, last year ironically had one of the lower percentages in Six Nations kicking and England need him to get these three points to bring England back and some reward for that multiple phase effort it's uh, it's a tricky little angle for Owen Farrell it's one of those uncomfortable starters I hear you all as it's all breaking up but it's beautifully struck and England are on the scoreboard France 5 England 3 can't hear you Interesting to see where England are targeting their runners slightly wider out, not going round the corner successively. Nigel Owens has got something to say. Okay. Okay. Wesley Fofana. Uh, can't see any blood. Uh, what was the lot about? Anyway, Jules Plisson. Towards Jack Noel again. Billy Vinopola says, I'll have that. And Vunipola does well to take it five metres beyond the 22. Hartley, Robshaw. Oh, Billy Twaltries. Gone backwards, says the referee. Play on. Inside. Johnny May is off the field as Brice Dunant, the fullback, launches a counter attack. Good footwork by the French fullback. Good cover tackle by Tom Wood, England's leading tackler. Cross field. Danger, danger. France could be in for a second try. Noel tackles his opposite number. Penalty advantage being played. Dussin arrives. Penalty advantage still being played. Bastao. I think it's a, a knock on advantage, Eddie. So it should be over soon. Advantage over. Kaiser off his Fofana. Fofana foot in touch. Out. And the rest of his body into touch. Well, England's scramble defence just about working there, but they've been found out twice with these cross kicks and. No, 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 no. They've been well executed by France on occasion there. It was just the, the bounce piece. of the ball that didn't go their way this time that prevented a second try going over. Alex Good, replacement for Johnny May. Just eight minutes played. Dylan Hartley will throw into the line outs. Well taken by Joe Launchbury, but it's gone loose. Knock on by France. Still a situation to work out Farrell. Now then, is that an advantage? Well, it's enough. I mean, that is a sort of in inexactitude that you cannot have. Advantage the ball is well won. Yeah, there was an attempt. Simply not paying attention. Puts it an under pressure to the extent where Rob Shaw has to pass the ball back. Hence less time, hence the slicing to touch in France. Prime attacking opportunity. Nyonga packs it down to Bernard Leroux. And the French forwards go back, but now on comes the drive. Penalty advantage this time. The ball has been left behind, but it's still an advantage. As Thomas Domingo has a little pick up and go. Good, solid defence by England. Now, the release. Plisson will have a second go. Julian oh, <laughs> didn't want that, but we go back the for the penalty. Round, well, I would have... To kick or not to Number kick. Number five! Broke your bind in the mall. Came round. They will definitely kick the goal here, or should. And again, this is from... 
it's almost self-inflicted it came from the line out which wasn't cleared properly a good shift drive from France which means they take the ball at one part of the line out transfer it to another part where there isn't as much defense set the drive there and then go forward that's Tom Wood who did very well to stop the um, the mall. I can hear you now yes Doucin, his second kick at goal. <laughs> Safely controlled, France extend their lead, eight points to three. Now again, we saw Jules Pisson looking to put the ball behind the England rush defence, and they're going to have to make a decision fairly early as to where and when they use that and where and when they use a drift defence which is slightly more conservative but will cut out that option wide out behind them. Easy. And that's a good follow-up by England. Mike Brown from fullback chasing down the French wing. England will have a good attacking opportunity here. Well, I think um, they've moved Brown to the wing and, and good to fullback. It would make more sense and I think that's what's happened. Tom Wood down, Cairn offloads Vunipola, England forwards pour in, now it's Farrell, Burrell, Alex Good goes in to help, England cut back the way they came, Chris Robshaw, still on the front foot, England in front of the French posts, Farrell, 12 trees, Rooney Polo drops it, France can break out here, Uge leads the charge, that's excellent covering work by Danny Kerr. X, X, X. One is out. X. Dan Cole. Mills. Kerr has to haul himself back into position. Hartley. Care. Hasn't gone very far. I also thought it was an England player in front there, but Fofana took it. Flancao now, it's Bastao. Little dink through. Louis Picamol chases. Good comes across and ushers the ball safely into touch. Well, thereby. France have made a lot of ground and will have the advantage of the throw, however, I'm sure that if Bastard had kept the ball in hand with his size, it would have been an offload with two men outside him. Danny Kerr does well in retreat. Keep it clean in the air, the ball had gone last time, but still let him come down, please. You have a look there, Bastard goes, he draws the outside man as well and it would have been a two-on-one. Kazel with a throw, long, hard. Beautifully taken by Courtney Laws at the tail. Ball stolen on the French throw. Stay, stay, turn, stay! Jack Noel sets off in pursuit and tackles Duda. Another turnover, Tom Wood. Feeds Farrell, 12 trees, a real chance for England. Uge is on his own, but he's going to win the race. I really do not understand why 12 trees kicked the ball there. Prime counter-attacking opportunity, half the That's width of the field to play with three men on the front foot, and the French turned. If you had to kick, okay, you could have kicked two passes later when the move maybe had a close down. As it was, that ball could have gone left and should have gone left. We are soft for one minute, okay? Billy Boni Polar receiving treatment. And here's. If 12 Street straightens there, the outside man had already come in. It would have been a three on a sort of one and a half. The French player inside may or may not have got there. Once you kick the ball, that makes a decision for everybody. You don't let anyone outside you have the opportunity to see how difficult. the defence is playing out, how many men have got across, okay. and where the last man is. Although that was a long way out, that was a chance missed.
Eddie, we're just going to look okay. at how the, the new cats have settled in. And for Jack Noel, I have to say, it was a really interesting start because this is the kickoff, start of the game. Joe Lunchbury misjudges it. Noel knocks it on there. That was his first touch. Then he gets the third inter welcome to international rugby. He runs into pick and moles and flank cut, knocks back. But since then, he's come back. But what an education, what an entrance into international rugby. Jack Noel, last contribution to thump into a Frenchman and regain the ball for England. Good drive by the England forwards. Joe Launchbury organise it with his back to France. Still going forward. Here comes Tom Wood, slightly on his own. Dan Cole arrives. Robshaw goes to ground. Farrell, this is for Noel. Brice Dulin wins that little contest. Was he taken in the air? Well, he called the mark, he was still in the air and you were in terms. It's a penalty now. Yes, he was. That's a penalty. It's a penalty, OK? In the air. Penalty, so Dulin hands the kicking no, duties to Plisson. Doesn't matter, in the air. Ten. Ten. Penalty. And again, a bit of an experience showing because if he, he just waits that split second later, he still gets the man. He will get the mark, but you will get the throw in from the kick. Well, that's quite clear, isn't it? As it is, France have got the throw-in. Not the best ball for Doucin from the young guy. No hands there! No, no, it's not. Dulac comes in to scrum half. Pape, the captain, nowhere near the advantage line. Good defence by England, uprushing defence. France did well, actually, to clear that up, though. Plisson finds space, but good covered well. Uge tries to make life difficult, but Kerr delivers safely two 12 trees. That's a good cutout pass, and Joe Mahler has a chance to go forward. Farrell, Tom Wood, good tackle by Nyonga. And France have turned over England, and away comes Nyonga. He started that. And he's deeply involved for Fana. Uze. Uze against Good. This is Dula. Brown clatters into him. No, this back to Uze is follow up. A second try for Uze. A second try for France. What an opening quarter. And there's a difference. Turn over ball. France moving in hand. Wait until they see how it develops. And then the kick comes in. It doesn't matter whether you say there's a, for, for, a fortuitous bounce, that's irrelevant. They've gone their way, and they only got into that position anyway because they did the right thing with the turnover ball. England gave them that opportunity by ball being smoked by Wood. And now it's good, you've got to go lower than that. Allows him to make four or five yards first. It's very subtle skills here, the one-handed offload. Dulin, the weight of the kick. No penalty there, but the bounce is kind for Uge. Well, kind or not, everyone knows. <laughs> Shape of a ball, that is a possibility. But again, I stress it came from France doing the right thing with turnover ball. Dussain can't add the two, two extra points, so France... Wow, what a start for Johan Uze in this game. Two tries and his team lead by 13 points to three. I can't hear you, sir. It'd be good there, you see how much ground is made. No, no, you were down to me, and it was on the feet, you were down. You were down. The other thing as well is, because Good did not, because Good did not put Uze down on the floor, he is there, able to support. Had he knocked him down on the floor, irrespective of what he'd done with that, wouldn't have been in that position. 
And away come France again. This time it's uh, Jean-Marc Doucin, the scrum half. Leroux leaves it for Kayser, the hooker. You can just see France are on a real roll here. Bastereau with a little shimmy. And then the more traditional pumping of the knees. And that's out. That's out. that's out. They have to play that. Plisson. Nyonga, another little kick for France, and this time relief for England as the ball goes out. A bit of off the ball between Tom Wood and Wesley Fofana. This was um, out of a shot, but it was, it was nothing serious. Just like the good old days, really. Stuart Lancaster not looking happy, and well, he might not, because England are under pressure at the moment. And stay there, please. Well, let's listen to Nigel you Owens. Stay there. Don't go anywhere. Stay there. Go and stay there, please. Both of you stay there. You got anything? You take a look at what started it. Number eight has certainly got involved when okay. he Okay. We're going to have a look at this through the television Jim? match official Jim Yule of yes, Scotland. Nige. Have a look at uh, what caused that. And if there's anything in, show me again on the screen and have a look. Otherwise, I'm just going to speak to eight and six. Okay, check, see what caused it. Louis Picamol is eight and Tom Wood is six. Well, it wasn't high, it was late. This is Jules Plisson and that's the late challenge. Plisson was slipping. Okay, Jim? Yes, Nige. As far as I can see, as number 10 has passed, he's gone down into and six has just come in. So I'm just going to talk to them unless you're seeing anything different than anything else. That's fine. Correct. Okay. I want you two to stay there, can you? As you pass the ball and you fall, the tackle is fair, okay? It is not late, okay? And that's it. Back you go. Back, back you go, please. You go back now. Go back. You two, when the whistle goes, I don't want you grasping like that again. It doesn't look good. It's not good. Let that be the end of it. Okay? So, number eight, please, you. Not you. After the whistle is gone, I don't want any more of that. Is that clear? If I just speak to you again, it'll be different. Back you go. We've got to carry on. You've got to love Nigel Owens, haven't you? Man of common sense. And, uh, very clear. The upside is that Dylan Hartley will throw into the line out, and England have actually managed to take the steam out of uh, France. Stay! Is on. That's straight out. That's, uh, that's put Are themselves you back in trouble. Well, it's another unforced, self induced mistake, isn't it? Self inflicted mistake, rather. And when you're trying to get momentum when you've been under pressure, you know, that sort of thing immediately puts you back. France in England territory. Back, go back, go back. Big tall back. Alexandre Flancard back. wins the lineup. That's it. England can pour through. Tom Woods nearly got there. France, they've done well to get themselves back into possession there. Nyonga to Pape, Vunipolo with the tackle. Nyonga again, Plisson. Uge chases and Fofana, well taken by Alex Goud. Danny Kerr clears up, Nigel Owens was playing an advantage. Knock on by England.
going down, lads, please. Don't know whether that's broken. Serious enough to keep him off for good, though, I would think. Just get on with it, please. And this will be an interesting uh, platform here. The French, I think, with their uh, front row, more experienced, will be looking to get an edge. What we agreed from the first run, Dan Cole needs to anchor and make sure that no penalties are given away. Picamol looks up and uh, there's an inviting blindside. France have got the penalty. Straight down and your legs are too far back. Get it better, please. Well, that's not anchoring, and it's not, not giving penalties away. And when you're 13-3 down, you, you simply have to keep that up. It doesn't matter if you don't get the advantage. What you can't do is give them a short goal and feet go back. Pascal Pape immediately indicated posts. Pape said uh, he's merely standing in for Thierry Dussetois, but... Uh, he is, a, he is a presence, Pascal Pape. Here's Doucin. Sweetly struck, France's lead grows 16 points to three. And England badly, badly need a period of play with the ball to take pressure off them and try and reverse this momentum because the French at the moment are outthinking England. This time it's Louis Picamol who uh, catches and uh, gets away, gets France outside the 22. Courtney Laws goes straight through the middle and disrupts good work by the England second row. England steal French possession and Dylan Hartley reaches the 22. Care. Burrell against Bastaro. Oh dear. Yeah. Tom Wood tries to accelerate into the contact area. Release. France sends a turnover. Domingo goes digging. And uh, France reversed the momentum there and uh, have the penalty as their reward. Second time, we regather the second time. Explanation quite uh, clear from Nigel Owens. And again, England will find themselves back in their own half, facing a French throw. Plissant, this could be very interesting. If that can go dead, it won't. That is a very poor kick, isn't it? It wasn't even anywhere near. England have a 22. Alex Goud took his time about touching the ball down, but um, it's a little let off for Plisson. If that had gone dead, it would have been a scrum way back. Owen Farrell, one for the forwards to chase. Again, it's good work by Courtney Laws. Vuni Pola steps and goes the extra metre. 12 trees. Good Laws gets the pass away to Brown. Tight against the touchline, but stays in field. Mile of the prop. Farrell saw a prop against him and had a little go himself. Robshaw gets through the tackle of Leroux, the South African, and now a Frenchman. Vunipola, Farrell, Good, Law still happy out there, Brown and France. Well, they can't get him into touch, and Brown gets a good pass away to Alex Good. Now it's gone forward, 12 trees, it won't count. Well, Good, foresight by Good, Seeing the very narrowest of, of gaps and stepping inside. But the final, final, what was possibly a scoring pass, Joseph Begging. Time out.
There's the knock on. Wonderful sleight of hand by Mike Brown. Okay. Here we have the uh, look at the yeah. stats there. Although the carries have been in England's favour, metres made double by France right. almost. So let's look at the uh, the new cap for France. Pistons, I think, has had a really assured start. But I read in an article that Tom Wood did this week, he said one of his roles was to get right in his face, and that might mean holding him down. Look at this. He holds him, he holds him, he's still holding him, because he doesn't want him to get back in the face. So if you wanted to know what Tom Wood was doing, he told you this week, and he's done it to the letter of what he said. Time on. Tom Wood, Jules Pisson. Now then, what pressure can England exert here? That is the French five-metre line. Doucin to feed. Will Kayser strike or will they go for the walk-on? Safely delivered to Picamol. And away comes, well, the bulldozer, Mathieu Bastaro. Plisson. A better kick, England take it quickly, Brown, Jack Knoll, went for the offload and it ends, ends up in the arms of Maxime Meda, Domingo, and uh, confusion on both sides. Well there's a fine line isn't there between uh, trying to keep the ball alive and making passes which are never going Hit yeah, their target. Up. All happy the last scrum? Same again. It's good, no problem. The thing is, from Noel's point of view, he's That's got to decide whether or not he's in the position to the make the pass in an ordered way, or whether it's one that he simply is seeing a white shirt out of the corner of his eye and trying to force the pass. And it was the latter on that occasion. Still, it's a very good position for England, and Jack Noel is uh, in an interesting position himself. He's not on his wing, he's smack in the middle of the field behind this scrum. So we've got Farrell, Good, and Noel all behind the scrum. Can go either way. There you are. Whether he's right or wrong, Dan Cole has to stay up here. There's the, uh, the yes, formation behind the scrum. We all need to help each other here and get your legs underneath your body stronger than... I would imagine there's been a, a pre-planned call which will have an override call depending on how the ball is won, if indeed it is won. Crouch! Yes. Find! Set! Penalty to France, England Ha, they're having trouble at the scrum. The ball is coming back from the blue side, they're driving and you went down. Well, if the ball wasn't hooked and it's gone back to the French side, whether or not Nigel Owens thought England were responsible, that is a that you know, the French were going to win that ball. Here we go. Because it's not hooked. Well, actually, I don't think they were going with that ball. Ball comes in. Dylan Hartley can't get his foot to it. Effectively tries to hook get it with his knee. Is he is he not striking because under down. pressure, or is it a? Or do they just want his weight as an eight-man push? Well, you can't strike unless you get your your heel out. Dusan gets away from the tackle of Courtney Laws, but here comes Pape. Nyonga again plays scrum half. Picamol. Plisson. Fofana. Good defence by England. Dulin. Tom Wood makes the tackle. Luru. Nyonga. Plisson. Fofana. Medar. Medard tried to go between the props. P. 
Son changed his mind. Good pass out to pick them all. Pick them all against no. Is it going to stay in play? Well, it hit the corner oh. flag. My oh my. The bouncing ball is causing all sorts of problems for England. Well, the corner flag isn't in play. It doesn't matter if that had bounced back into play rather than out and being gathered. It would be a try. Long throw by Dylan Oh, just gets there. 12 trees. Care. Maxi Meda. He's was a passage of player. Well, here we go. Sebastian Chaval in the crowd. This is the line, I think. Before it touched the you didn't know that? flag. How long have you been or playing? the support. That's different. We did pass it, you gotta tap it, yeah. England at the moment, so gap, earlier on, Billy 12 trees again rush defence, forced the French back inside. However, it wasn't just the case of the French player then bullocking straight on. There was a support runner from depth off him that then made ground. Doucin under pressure from Joe Launchbury. And England could have turned this. They have good work. All started by Launchbury, Hartley, oh, to Courtney Laws, out of the Puripola. England get it away, 12 trees, slips as he cuts it there, finds Fofana, and another subtle pass, perfect, but that's excellent work from Nyonga, and he manages to find only an England, his big hoof finds touch. Well, the English stated intention to move the French around isn't working because it's been yeah, okay. undone by turnovers, knock-ons and things like that. Lovely bit of skill by Fafana. What a, what a great What's play for you. Stay on the line, please, OK? Yes, yeah, just there. Yannick Nyonga has had an outstanding first half. Hartley throws, Wood again at the tail. Let it go now, let it go. Let's use it then, and move it. England have five seconds now. Pape is not offside, holding England up in a more position. It's not being called, but it was one. Robshaw comes away with it and does well from a standing start to make that much ground. 12 trees through the tackle of Flancal, but it's still not safely under control, though. Nyanga nearly stole that. Kerr goes in for it. Farrell, Courtney Laws, pick them all with a tackle. Care again. Wood. Care looks for the straight runner who is Dan Cole. Burrell. Nyonga is over the ball. Barged off it though. Care cuts back against the traffic. Vunipola, five metres out. France Another playing the turnover. And England have to reposition to receive. Put up the defensive wall, and it was solid. Well, England needed to come away from that series again. Graham Rowntree is talking about how many players going around the corner, but you've got to get men in quicker. Carry on, please. Go, carry on, please. Carry on. Play goes on. I think it's uh, Francis Hooker who's down. Yeah, it is Bosman Kaiser. Again, Vuni Pola picks himself up and gets some traction. Mahler. Kaiser is back in the action. Cole picks up. England are on the 22.
penalty advantage England. Kerr takes it quickly. Danny Kerr on his own, five metres short. Hartley tries to get the pass away. Billy Moody Polar. Mike Brown. Has he scored his first try for England? Nigel Owens is confident, I think. Well, something out of nothing and hugely welcome from an England point of view. Danny Kerr providing the spot, that's what he's there for. Barnes Wallace from Dylan Hartley. That's good work from Mike Brown. If the if the grounding yeah, is there, sorry, a lot to do here. One, two, three, four. It is Mike Brown's first try for England in his 22nd game. Well, I think Nigel Owens is waiting to see if there's anyone to give it. No, I don't think there is any reason why he can't give it. Well, there's only three minutes remaining. If that is given and the conversion is successful, a 16-10 deficit on the balance of play is very poor reward for the French dominance of most of this half. Owen Farrell with the conversion. Nope. Nope. Well, that keeps England... Uh, how to score more than a converted try. Good pick-up by Vunipola. Excellent finish. It's a good finish from Brown. Although he was close to the line, a lot of work to do. Plissant to restart. France, their lead is cut at the end of the first half. Joe Launchbury calls for it. Yeah, that hasn't gone very far. That's brilliantly taken by Jack Knoll. Up to halfway. Kerr, Farrell for Brown, the man of the moment to chase. Oh, EJ, that's magnificent. Plisson, that's straight down Knoll's throat. So the Exeter wing has a chance to come back at France. Into the 22, Pika Ball is covering. He has, is good. What well, a final attacking platform for England in this half. Very near to half time. And what they should aim for here is whatever happens at the end of this series of plays to at least work themselves into a position where the default position is that they can have a drop at goal. To get anything better, great. They don't. At least they've got that shot. Rob Shaw, the forwards, close around him, go one way and then the other. It's there for Danny Kerr and Farrell. 12 trees right next to him. Away! Penalty advantage, England. Rob Shaw. Advantage still being played. Kerr. Penalty. Farrell goes around Domingo. Gets the ball to Marla. Kerr, Vunipola, pass from the number eight to Robshaw. Chance here for England. Dan Cole to Dylan Hartley. Well, the advantage is over. The advantage is over. England still in possession. Keep your feet. Kayser makes life difficult for Billy Twelve Trees. Can you take it out, please? Contest over. It's there for Hartley. Bastol with the tackle. That was a knock-on. It's not being given. Away, you! Away, you! Marla picks up. Hills. Okay, has to play it quickly. Farrell drop goal. Wide. Half time. Well. 
Helter Skelter Rugby at the start of the pause. And at half time, France, the home side, lead by 16 points to 8. France have uh, made a change at half time. Louis Picamol is on. But they've also brought on Antoine Bourbon for his first cap. Just trying to work out where he's going. He's going into the back row. Is it Bernard Laporte Leroux? Bernard Leroux, who's, uh, who's gone off. There's Billy Vuni Pola. Huh? Owen Farrell huh? with the ball. Go on, nothing. Yeah, I will do, yes. Okay, well. France lead by 16 points to 8. <laughs> Owen Farrell sends it into the French 22. Picamol waits. Stay blue. Please on. Vuni Pola has a chance to take it quickly. Does so. Alex Goo and Owen Farrell. Good kick by Farrell. England on the front foot, deep in the French 22 with a line out. Well, it's born if you decide not to make ground and hold your ground that kicks like that do go into touch and don't give a, an easy opportunity for defenders to clear. Vital for England to put pressure on this. French line out, which hitherto you know, has rocked a little bit with balls tapped down. That one isn't. Nyonga with the catch. Picamol leads the ball away from the five feet of danger zone. Hartley ordered to go back. Dussain. No, Vuni Pola, no number on his shirt, still plenty of strength in his legs. Farrell, Mike Brown, Brown against Uze, beats him, Fofana gets back, but the trademark of Mike Brown always beats the first tackler. Farrell, Vuni Pola, Launchbury on his shoulder, Care. 12 trees on the loop, good. Care switches play. Courtney Laws, two metres short. Care, Farrell. Nicolas Mas, the prop, makes a good tackle. Advantage being played, England. Hartley twists the ball back towards Care. Rooney Pola to care again, care goes, can he get the ball down? We're going to Jim Yule again, the match official. Time out. Could you see whether he got, I couldn't see whether he got the ball down. You were offside in the uh, box. Andy Nicholl to my right is saying yeah. yes. Try yes or no please, if not then going back for offside. Okay, we'll two. check. So a straight decision there. He will have to find a reason one way or another to give yes, it or yes, not. Be going back for offside two. Still Number in two. possession. Still Sorry. in possession. Does he put it down now? Is that short? Right, the line is over. It, it looks slightly short to me there. No, no, no. Only after I put the time on. Uh, Andy Nichol is fast changing his mind. I tell you what, it'd be much better if the TMO was explaining how he was looking at this, what he was looking for, a la Rugby League. Well, I'm not sure you're going to see that from this angle at all. I think Danny Kerr knows he's short. <laughs> Can I play this Nigel, now? Nigel, there's nothing clear and obvious there. I go back for the penalty. 
Okay. No try. Back to the penalty. Offside. Yes. Well, it's the one that feels like relief for France, but it's still a penalty opportunity for England. Keep pushing back, please, number two. Well, Owen Farrell got uh, one from a slightly easier position in the first half, not Time on. the best side for a right-footed kicker. But very important for England to open this half with a score. Well, they've come out with a real fire, haven't they? There's a yeah, they needed to. Reversal. They needed to. Well struck, England are on the board, they do get their reward for the fine start they've made to the second half. France 16, England 11. Right now, game on next 10 minutes, Time vital out. for both sides. Four. And important, okay, I, I would imagine that Stuart Lancaster would say at half-time, you must hang on to the ball in contact. Zalzewski coming on. Dimitri Zalzewski comes on into the French hooking position, also on number 19, Johan Maestri, the giant. Alexandre Flancard leaves. Hey, time on. <laughs> the French pack doesn't get any smaller. Maestri adds massive bulk to it. Vunipola. There is Maestri wearing 19. And there's Bilbao wearing 20. Tom Wood stopped by Nyonga. Care towards Kikabon. Oops. Safely gathered. Just. Release now! Domingo the prop. And France a long way from the advantage line. Dulin for himself to chase, was he obstructed? No, Nigel Owens right there as Alex Good comes away with it. Courtney Laws can't take it. He's back. Nigel Owens says that that went back. We play off. It's going to be a penalty right or a turnover. France sends the turnover. Turns back. Trees and Robshaw come away with it. Farrell too, chance for England. Luther Burrell gets the pass, and now Kerr takes it at pace. Jack Knoll, tackled by Maestri. Bouval does well to claim the turnover for France. There, delivered for Dusan, who doesn't want the advantage. They'll take the kick, and the little pause it will deliver to the game. France need to catch their breath. Well, Noel is doing some things well and other things not as well. I thought the decision initially to take that in was a wrong one anyway, but then get into contact, ground too early, and therefore you have to seed the ball before players are in support. Been better to move that wide. Noticeable that France huh? have taken their time coming to this line out. No, it looks sharp to me as well on the screen as well, yeah. Well, there's no need for them to rush, is there? They won't want to do that. Maestri wins his first line out. Yeah, France looking to take the zip out of the game. A power play up front. Lonsbury and Laws have done well there if they hold this up. Come down to England come away with a put in at the scrum. Well, unusually for the French, they didn't seal the ball off properly before they went forward, which allowed two of the England forwards to get in. But this is an area which in the first half we didn't see an awful lot of, to be honest, but it, it wasn't... Okay, yes, Stu. 
any problems, touch just an area that blocked. England okay, time out. would have been proud of. Time out, Jim. Is it okay? No, I get the feeling if England want to win this game, they've got to obviously they've got to keep the ball, but they've got to keep the ambition, they've got to keep the French pack moving. Okay. I suppose uh, it's almost as if Philippe Saint André, the French coach, anticipated that his forwards would be stretched. So he put six fresh sets of legs on the bench. Well, it does show, doesn't it? You know, six forwards on the bench that they are intent, you know, on. Whilst they've actually capitalised and their backs have done well off turnover ball, off first phase ball, they are intent on driving and, you know, and giving it and putting England under pressure and putting them on the back foot from first phase. Crouch! The veteran Nicolas Maas against uh, Set. Joe Marla. France wheel it round, but not enough to prevent Billy Vunipola coming away. Farrell. Stay! Stay! Stay on! Chris Robshaw comes away with it. Farrell. Fooney Pola. Players hanging on to him, but Luther Bell comes away. Oh, the kicking game worked. The passing game worked. England are level. Well, England rode the luck with a few bounces from that, but a good, I mean, great power by Billy Vida Pola. The French couldn't bring him down. He had presence of mind to make sure he offloaded the ball. Burrell running a good line back towards Vinipolo, right on the post, seven points and... It's now the French who are under the cosh, bearing in mind that they seem to be looking to play a forward-orientated game, if England could keep moving them around. They could well run out of steam. <laughs> Up they go, and England through Owen Farrell at the simple two points. England are in front. 16 France, 18 England. When you pick players, you can either have a negative or a positive attitude to them. You can say, I'm not picking him because he can't do this and the other. There are lots of things Billy Villapola can't do, but the things he can do like that can be game changing. More changes. For France, Thomas Domingo comes off. There's England's try scorer, Luther Burrell. First game, first try. Changes in the French front row. On come Yannick Forestier and Rava Slimani. Plisson. Up goes Joe Launchbury. Wood delivers safely for care, and they like that old kicking game. That's a little flat and uh, only into Louis Picamol's hands. Plisson, not Nyonga and Bastago combined with Fofana. Easy for a hat trick. Back to Fofana. Easy goes in. Knock on by no play on, says the referee. That's going to be turned over. defence by Mike Brown. Mike Brown has delivered a turnover for England. Let it come, no hands away from the net, please, hands away. The game has opened up. The ball is lost, hands away. England score, France nearly score. England have the ball deep in their 22. Happy to keep it in the forwards' hands. Kerr now looks to kick. Nyonga surges onto the ball. Bill, Billy Vunipola makes a crunching tackle. It's out there for Plisson. One of the two of the new front rows players, Zazeski Foyestier. Plisson can't get it through. Kerr chases the charge down. Good football controlled by K. 
Care then loses control, does go forward off Care. Knock on. <laughs> oh, two guys wearing 15 can share a moment. Well, funnily enough, you know, Danny Care has played a lot of football in his, uh, in his youth. Couldn't quite get that under control. Time out. Well, he's just waiting right to do that one. He was thinking, bounce up, bounce up, so I can actually take it on the run. It didn't. What is interesting this half, though, Eddie, is this, is that the England defence first out came up much slower. They didn't rush, and therefore, they're covering the kick behind. Big hit by Billy and Vola. Oof. You don't want to run into Billy, do you? Not really, no. Not, not if you've got a choice, no. That's his brother. Brother Mako is on. Joe Marla has taken his lead. First knock on well, through ball. They do. They have written this above all to thine own self be true. And England's intent was to move the French around, and they've got to keep to that. Square, please. Come on. Two new props, Rabas Slimani against Marco Vunipola. We bind! Now go down and bind and set. Safely out for Picamo, who goes past Danny Kerr. Doucin. Plisson. High towards Alex Good. Good and Brown together. Good puts it up for Brown to chase. Well taken, Brice Dulin. What a catch the fullback. What a catch. Plisson behind Jack Knoll, but Knoll read it well and goes back. Keep coming, White. Doucin. Plisson. Up goes Alex Good. Knocks on. Pascal Pape. Advantage being played to France. They go left, they might have an advantage. They've got men over. No, too slow now. Plisson. Zalzewski. Advantage now over. England reclaim possession through Launchbury. Robshaw. Vudipola of the Mako variety. Same family trait. Ground made. Hard yards there. And by also Rob by Robshaw. Dylan Hartley. This is Joe Launchbury. Farrell into space. That will do. Intelligent playing the game in French territory. More pressure, and of course, because England have now got the lead. Isn't good enough for France anymore to plod around the field and just work positions. They've got to try and up the pace. They've got to try and manufacture scoring opportunities. They can't afford simply to be playing a reactive game where they are winning possession in their own 22 and ceding it back to England by kicks. Good move. Chris Robshaw just got a hand first on the ball and. Joe Launchbury finished the turnover job. Tell you a long time before that, there was a lot of good, a good play from uh, Noel. Knew he got a short angle, so he kicked it long, and that changed the complexion of that particular play. Maestri wins the line out for France. Picamol comes away with it. Good pass to Zalzewski. Good turn of pace by the replacement hooker. Stays in field. Now the ball's out of play. Oh, it's a it's an unsatisfactory finish to a, a breakout by France. Well, I, if you know, it, it looked good from Sarzewski on a bullocking run, but it's dull, frankly, because he, he had to step inside there. He wants to run over and through and all, but the important, you know, the important thing is to make sure that he doesn't, or the ball is not put into, is not put into touch. Crowd has gone quiet, actually. They've got going again now as they steal a line out. <laughs> Medar, he's been very quiet, passes to Bilbo. Bastaro, oh, out comes the handoff and 
Billy Twelchies feels it. Hills. Yeah, he may have felt that though, but he held on, brought him down. Pape. He feels the tackle of Makovunipola. France have got to be careful here. They do manage to work the ball back, but it was slow and Plisson puts it long. Good and Brown. Now then, this worked well last time. Good kicks, Brown chases. It's worked again. Plisson knocks on. Good delivers to Brown. Brown takes on Vilbon, gets the pass away to Rob Shaw. Away, Twelve trees. No, no, not that play. Farrell. No. Good for Burrell. Passes to Farrell. Courtney Laws up to the 22. Farrell takes down Cole's pass. Billy Budipola. That's a good tackle by Bastao. Marco Budipola makes two yards more. Hartley. Nyonga with a thumping tackle. Too slow. Penalty advantage. It's Nyonga who's been penalised. Care doesn't want the advantage. He does. anyway. Drop goal by Danny Kerr. England's He's lead grows 21 points to 16. And from 16 3 down, England now lead 21 16. And the complexion of the game changed completely, hasn't it? England are retaining the ball. They're putting pressure on France. Their kicks are making touch. You know, France are falling into the trap, and it does happen whereby they think well, we haven't had the right field position, we haven't had any momentum, we haven't had the ball. And what they're doing is they're kicking trying to think that will get them that. And of course, all it does is see possession to England, and provided England don't make mistakes by kicking the ball out on the full, it simply comes back to France and puts pressure on them. Machineau comes on for Doucin at scrum half. Come on. The junior brother, Billy, takes care kicks. Machineau immediately involved. Zalzewski holds an England player. Now Mida. England will have the scrum. And just as it was England in the first half, spilling ball. It's a French now under pressure, and they're doing it. There was nobody else there. You were from the side. Stuart before. Lancaster will be thinking. I don't know. He can't get it onto the field unless it comes on Take now with the um, well, the physios. Just saying this: do not give the French anything. Don't give penalties away by putting your hand in there. Tom Young's coming on for Dylan Hartley. That will improve. The, well, it won't improve, but it will certainly yeah, keep the momentum up. But it must make. If the French are good enough to take points off you, fine. Nothing you can do about that. But stop. If we go back to the, the England score, I've been really impressed with Owen Fowle tonight. And look at the, what he does here so really well. What you want from your standoff is to scan what's looking in front of you. Look at that. His eyes are looking forward. Pleasant comes out the line and then he pulls the ball back to Vinopolo, who then offloads it to Brel for the trap by Owen Farrell. They looked handy there, actually. People were saying behind me, oh, there's a crossover there, there wasn't. England have changed their hooker, Tom Youngs is on. We've got brothers, we've got a father with a son on the field. Tom Youngs, of course, has brother Ben, who's not in the matchday squad. Same as the last scrum, please. Important here. England, the last scrum went OK. Different hooker. Crowd. Find. Set. England get a strike on the ball. Vunipola feeds care. Machineau 
to Dulin. Good footwork by Dulin. Tom Wood got him in the end. Pape, the captain, is going nowhere. National. No weights. This time doesn't risk the offload. Now there might be something on. Oh, Farrell says, let's go down into this little corner here. Like it down here. Do that. That's a beautiful kick. Spiralling down into the England half. Quickly taken. Farrell to care. And then Johan Uge, who has barely had a sniff in this second half. Mike Brown took it and takes it to halfway. Dan Cole. 12 trees to Tom Youngs, who did well. Trees. England in full control. Farrell. Nobody to his left. Billy Vonipola arrives now and lines up Maestri. Penalty advantage to France. Bastaro has the ball. Advantage being played. Zalzewski comes away. Gets the ball to Masino. 13 on Fofana, 13 on 12. Nyonga can't hang on to it. Uge comes away with it. Referee has blown. Referee has already stopped playing. Lock on. How often does that happen just as the referee says, advantage over, there's an error. A great shame for England that Danny Kerr's break wasn't finished off, but it was because yes, of a yes. great piece of robbing work by Mario Bastero. Okay. Yeah, I'll go up by height, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Uge from uh, not being involved, very much involved. Lee Dixon preparing to come on, he's, he's not on yet. Change at Scrum Half for England. Here's the Farrell break. Well, Farrell has been given a lot of big difference about actually saying you can't play on the game, like can't do this, can't do that. The two examples out of the top draw today. Danny Kerr, a job well done. And he, as much as anyone, has been responsible for England getting back into this game and taking the lead. A very good 60 minutes from Danny Kerr. Dixon to feed the scrum, free kick. <laughs> not, not a great start, is it? <laughs> no, but it was fed. Tell you what, that's a problem when hookers don't, can't hook. Picamo. And then France need a response. They've had nothing in this second half. Machino, Bastaro, Fofana. Pisson to Dulin. Oh, 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 Courtney Law's brilliant tackle. Bastaro, I haven't heard his them that much in this game, have we, for all his billing? No, that goes Lee Dixon. Oh, and they work it out well. Here's Alex Goud. Puts the pressure back on France. Please, Dulin. Meda inside him. Dulin goes the other way. Feeds Picamol. Vuni Polo. The number eight hangs on to him. This is. Oh, 
Almeida passed out. Pepe tries to get the ball to Fofana. Back in, Jack, get back in. Dula puts boot to ball down into the 22. But France definitely look heavy on their feet. Yeah, they. Yes, I mean, that's a good kick, but uh, England's line out hasn't been peerless, but it's, it's worked reasonably well. So, works well again. And that's the problem with that sort of ploy. If you can't put pressure on the line out, all you do is give, give possession away. Dixon takes the kicking duty. Noel comes away with it, a real chance for England here. Jack Noel, oh, the dummies fought. Noel still in possession, still on his feet. Reinforcements arrive. Dixon to Farrell, stabs it through. Dula is back, as is Uge, but England have taken play from five metres from their own goal line. Stop messing to it. Oh, no, 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 no. And Uge. Mike Brown needs to walk away from this. Have to be careful, that might be worthy of a review. Yeah, have you finished? You're both asking very immature. Get on, get on the game with both of you. <laughs> Schoolmaster Owens right again. He could well have said the quote from Coriolanus, more of your conversation would infect my brain, so please be quiet. Mike Brown goes into the heart of midfield. There's an England player down right on the far side. Meanwhile, Courtney Laws can't get a hand to it. Vilmont comes away. For SDA, the prop. For Fana, now then danger, Dunay. He can't get the pass away. Forward pass, yes. So they can't work the breakouts. Now, only... Uh the final whistle will tell how important that lost line-out was, but if they could have driven that ball and put a score over here, I think that would have been beyond France. A lost opportunity. Yeah. Right, number eight. It's confused. Go back, Eddie. You know, when we're talking about France kicking the ball into an only seeding possession, if you think about it, from that kicked away possession, England ended up on France's five metre line. Are you rolling it that way? Put it in the middle. Like in number nine before you get. Brad Barrett is uh, warming up, but he's not on yet. France. Time on. Your pen gives us a second time. Defend this scrimmage. England put it. 21 Set. is on for France. Damien Chouli of Clermont goes into the number eight position. Unipola feeds. Picks. No, not on. It wasn't meant for him. No advantage. Right, now then, this England performance in the second half. Clive. Yeah, the, the, key, the, key, the key thing, Eddie, we're fight the five points up, the next score is absolutely critical. We should be setting up for a drop goal and just trying to get that eight points clear. That kills the game. So England are playing a little, they're playing fantastic. Huge courage by the team, hugely proud of everyone. But let's just calm heads. Three points wins Time the out. game. So let's just put on the drop goal routine and get this the eight points ahead and then we win. No, Clive. Here we go. Little knock on by Jack Knoll, but... Uh, England, Brian. I mean, this has just been all England, England in this second 14. half. Yeah, I, I, a turn around, a turn around that was needed. Jack, no, uh, Ben Morgan there when he's come on, he'll add a bit of impetus as well. Jack, no, it's been a mixed bag, hasn't he? He's done a few things uh, poorly, a couple of things out of the top draw, like the long touch kick and the you see in the break. It's his first cap, you know. Yep. Number what? Well. It's been a spirited second That's half by England, and the, the points have come, and Billy Vonipola England, 14, has more than played his part. He comes off, Ben Morgan goes on, Brad Barrett 
is also on. Luca Barrell is still on. Jack Knoll goes off. Luca Barrell goes on to the right wing. France have the put in at this scrimmage. They trail by five points and they haven't spent much time outside this half. They'll be out of their half now because they like have a long penalty kick down. There goes Jack Knoll. Well, Buddy Paul was the first to go down and he was seen by Nigel Owen. Has a tendency sometimes to lose his bind and if, if that goes, you're going to get pinned. No point in shaking your head. Dulan goes long to this side. Where do you have a feeling here? that this particular set of players will be absolutely crucial for France if they don't get some points out of this and England clear and get another okay, yeah, okay. platform in French territory I think their confidence is going to dip markedly It's a new pack for France here's one of the replacements, Dimitri Zalzeski here's another one, Slimani the prop well, Ben Morgan position. tries to get in the way Machino to a Bilbao, another of the replacement forwards. Machino, Plisson, Bastao. It's gone loose. Robshaw oh. comes away with it. It's gone loose again. Double loose. France will have the scrum. Well, it's really unusual for Chris Robshaw because whilst he doesn't, you know, make the searing breaks and flattering passes that a lot of open sides make. He does a lot of carries, he makes a lot of hard yards, and he very, very rarely loses the ball in contact. That occasion, he will be hoping, doesn't come back to haunt England. Kisrop Shaw discusses the situation with... Will I call him from the side? The ref. He's having a word about uh, the previous scrum penalty, talking about binding. Got you. Dave Atwood comes on. He'll go into the second row. Courtney Laws, I think Courtney Laws has had a wonderful game. Yep. He has been part. I mean, the credit must go to the England pack in the second half. They appreciably upped their work rate, reversed the edge that the French forwards had on them in the first half, and that's been extremely important by putting England on the front foot for the majority of the time during the second period. Composure and accuracy now needed. Right. Set. And no penalties. Oh, good drive by England. Did. Oh, Nigel Owens lets uh, France get away with that one as it seemed to go down the tight head side. Well, um, yeah, England will say that the tight head hinge went down. The French will say, you know, Woody Paula is at a wrong angle. His feet are too far back and therefore he can't keep the scrum up when it goes below level. But all the time the clock is ticking for England in England's favour. Fellow French should get on with this actually. 68 minutes. Right. Set. Johan Uzi, will his moment for a hat trick come? France get the drive this time. That's going to be a penalty. Penalty to France. Now then, with that sort of momentum, do you go for the scrimmage, Brian, or no, take the points? No, you take the points, take the points. The drive is on. There's a long time, well, there's 11 minutes left yet, there's enough time. This puts you within uh, a drop goal. Yeah, 69 minutes, France. And Call Dan up. Sorry. Machineau. Watch this, Dan Cole gets completely sideways and bang. Ground control. Ten blast, please. Congratulations go to Yannick Forestier. Dave Atwood, fresh on. Looking at Maxime Machineau. This, simple enough. And France up to 19, England still have the lead, but only now by two points.
It is now a question of nerve, isn't it? Who blinks first, who makes that important mistake? And I get the feeling it will come down to that. France. Send their forward scurrying across the field. Catch by Pape, the tackle by Ben Morgan. Machino, the penalty taker. Checks what's chasing this. It's Uge. Ben Morgan will be under it. Morgan shrugs off Uge. Shrugs off Maestri. Puts Bilbon on his backside. Dixon. Tom Young's the hooker. Good drive by Young's. Farrell. This is Tom Wood. Dan Cole. Dixon looks up, finds Farrell. England's hooker, Tom Young's. Farrell, little dummy, Dimitri Zalzewski. Didn't buy it. Wood again. Bourbon tries to go over the ball. It's there for England. Marco Bunipola. Farrell's out of the game. He's limping. Mike Brown has to be acting outside half. Farrell is finished. Dave Atwood. Penalty advantage to England. Robshaw. Makovuni Pola. To nobody. Here's Farrell. He doesn't want it. He can't do anything. Keep Good. going. Alex Good. Dixon. And we'll go back to the offside penalty. Uh, Farrell is out of the game. Alex Good has indicated that he'll kick for goal. Well, it looks like cramp. Let's go then. The minute has started. This time, France being penalised for not rowing out of the way quick enough. Owen oh, Farrell does go down, looks like cramp. And here is the new kicker for England, Alex Good. The kick is good by Good. England 24, France 19. Clive. Key, key thing now, Eddie, I was watching him, he's taking the kick. They've got to be focusing on the restart. The five points up, everything's on the restart now. Absolutely key. Remember the first 30 seconds? This is it. They've got to get in position very quickly and get themselves really organised. <laughs> ben Morgan. It's one of the mysteries of the day. Where is Clive? Ben Morgan. That's... A magnificent charge by the Gloucester number eight. Good towards Plisson. Dula. They do. The kicking game will not be enough for France. 74 minutes nearly. Mike Brown puts England into France's half. Well taken, Uge. No, Massino, rather. The fullback to the centre, but they're five metres beyond or behind where they started. So the England centres deserve a lot of credit for looking after Bastereau today because he's been largely anonymous. Massano feeds Pisson. Here is Slimani, the prop. Have they held him up? No. But they've turned the ball over. It's there for Marco Vunipola. Marco Vunipola, can he get the pass away? He takes it to ground. Dan Cole, oh, just a little knock on there. Squirt it out. Well, Nigel Lloyd's right on hand to see that accidental offside. What number two? 
Tell you what, two players who've come on, Ben Morgan and Tom Young's between them, I reckon have made about 80 yards in four or five carries. Gael Ficou, 19 years old, comes on for Mathieu Bastaro. They won't be running Ficou hard at any brick walls. Nobody in a, you know, in a game where people are getting cramped here. Maybe that's not what you need. You need people who can actually put some pace into the game because the French have not had this half anything like the dynamism they had in the first half. Part of that is responsibility of their forwards because they've been losing the battle, but the backs have also looked pedestrian. Bastogo was very, very average today. Right, into the last five minutes. England lead by five points. France will have to come from deep. So what, can I just mention this point because I don't mind pointing out refs when they, and I think that's right, when they don't do things right. Nigel Owens, exemplary refereeing performance today. Well done him and his officials. Who, who do who do officiate as a team, well done to the lot of them. France deep in their 22, in it comes. <laughs> that wasn't quite straight either. <laughs> Not quite. Plisson, Fofana. Plisson, no way through. Dan Cole makes the tackle. It's slow ball for France. Dulin, Ficou sets off in pursuit. France still have the ball. Dulin again. Bilbon. No, release. Away. Forestier, the prop, well held up by Billy Twelltrees. Fofana. Ficou. Advantage being played. Dulin long. Oh, that's good by France. A passing movement does create some space for Nyonga. Still going, Yannick Nyonga. Plisson is there acting scrum half. The pass is wild for Fana. Pape to Dula. Zalzewski, Ficou outside him, Gael Ficou! The finish by Ficou! He's going round under the post and France are going to steal it! The pass is worked at last for France and listen to this! Well, the crowd have rightly got into, into raptures. The French being patient, not forcing the pass. Ficou, all right, he's going to run, he's in, I told you he's not going to run through anybody, but he might run round you, and he has done dramatic, dramatic from the French. Right under the post as well. France will take all the time to, for this conversion, but England will have time. Good work by Szczeski there, drawing the man, not releasing the ball until the would-be tackler had come into him. They still need this for the lead. Maxime Machelot. The kick is good. France lead again. Philippe Saint André. What relief for him. What joy for the crowd. So, what good hands by Szczeski. Hooker. I don't think you can play him good there. He had a decision to make. Maybe you can say he should have hit the first man and left the pass to look after itself but difficult 
Pascal Pape, the captain, takes the restart. One and a half minutes to count down France. They've got five seconds to use this. Masson, oh, cast down! It's gone to Dula. Dula runs into Dan Cole, but France have a second chance. Masson this time gets the ball airborne. Ben Morgan. He makes ground with Yannick Nyonga, who is so important in the try, hanging on to him. A pass goes astray. England chased down. Gu can't get away from Plisson. It's an advantage oh, knock to anyway. France. Knock on advantage. France will eat up the second here. The whistle anyway. goes. That is it. That is it. Not yet. We'll have the scrum. No, I mean, in terms of, it's not the final whistle, but, it, you know, France are going to run the clock down. And, I have to say, the England forwards effort has been tremendous. However, I did say at about, mate, 68, how much will that lost line out on the five-metre line come back to haunt them? And I believe that, that that was a very significant point. They could have put the game beyond France at that point. They didn't. And... They paid for it. One of the key moments of the match, the hands of Dimitri Zazeski, the hooker, the taking of the pass, the giving of that pass. Yannick Nyonga, one of the rare French forwards to go the 80 minutes. They have to suffer the Marseillaise. How close England have come. But the game has been stolen by France. Pascal Pape, the French captain. He said only a win will do. Well, they're going to get one barring giving a penalty away here. Must finish for the game to finish. Okay. What do you think? How how far out of the scrum is this ball going? Well, look, they'd be better off. <laughs> they'd be better off simply seeding the ball because of the penalty. You can carry on going. Well, they were quiet for 35 minutes. They're very happy now. 15 seconds to go. Will we have Shades of Ireland against New Zealand? Oh. <laughs> Not quite even. Nearly get the drive going. Who's put in? Francis. Well, Nigel Owens has already said... The scrum has got to complete. St Andre, impatient. This will be France's third win out of 12 fixtures, so hugely important for them. And of course, in the Six Nations, very significant a win or loss in the first game. Marshall will feed the scrum. By the time it comes out, he may be able to boot the ball away for a French victory. Solid French scrum. Back to Dulau. We're into overtime. Bang into the crowd. Whistle will go for the end of the match. Oh, it's been a thriller in Paris. And the home team have won it. It ends France 26, what? England 24. What a start. England distraught, it was there for the taking, and then France snatched it from them at the very last, which means this is how the